Okay then gang, so now we've looked at a few different layout widgets that we can use to get our content onto the screen. But at the moment, the only actual content we've looked at is the text widget. So now I want to introduce the image widget as well, so we can show a few images on the screen. Now to do this, we're going to need some image files first of all, and we're going to need to place those images somewhere in the project folder. So the way we do that is by making an assets folder in the root of the project directory, and then any static assets like images can go inside here. And inside that folder, I'm actually going to create a subdirectory called ing to put all of the images inside of. But you don't need to do that if you don't want to. You can just place them directly inside the assets folder. So now I can just drag and drop some image files inside this folder. And you can get all of those images from the course files on GitHub. Just select this lesson branch from the branch drop down and download a zip folder of the lessons code. Inside that, you're going to find this assets folder with the images inside it. Okay, so next up, when we use static assets like this, we need to tell Flutter where to find them inside our project. And we do that inside the pubspec.yaml file. So if you scroll down this file a little bit, you're going to come to a commented out section that says assets. And underneath that, there's a couple of examples of how to add assets. So a hyphen first, then a path to whatever asset we want to use in the project relative to the project root directory. So let's uncomment this first of all, and then remove the current image paths, and then we can add our own in. So then in our case, we need to go into the assets folder first of all. So we say assets and then forward slash inside that we have an IMG folder. So IMG and then forward slash the name of the files. So we have coffee underscore BG and that's a JPEG file. And then under that, we'll do another one. So assets forward slash IMG forward slash coffee bean dot PNG. And then finally assets and then forward slash IMG and then forward slash sugar underscore cube dot PNG. And now if we save that, Flutter is going to know now where to grab those images from when we use them in our code. All right, so let's try using them. I'm going to go to the coffee prefs file over here and I'm just going to add an image before the sized box. So after both of the text widgets. So the easiest way to do this when we're using an asset ourselves that's inside the assets folder over here is to use the image widget, but then use a named construct on that called asset. So we say image.asset. And then as an argument, we pass in the path to the file we want to use. So that's going to be assets and then forward slash IMG. And then for this one, we'll say coffee underscore bean dot PNG. All right then. So we can also apply a width to this. And by the way, we're getting an error right here because this now can't be a const up here. So we can get rid of that const if we want to. You're going to see loads more blue lines, but we'll sort those out later. But as a second argument right here, we can pass in, or rather a second and third argument, pass in different options. So we can say the width of this, for example, is going to be 25 pixels. And we'll leave it there for now. But what I'm going to do is copy this image and then paste it also down here. So this time we're going to have sugar cube, like so. And then again, the width is 25. Now, let me just get rid of these by alt clicking all of them at the start, not that one, this one, and then these three down here. And we can say const in front of each one. All right, sweet. So now if we save that, we can see those two images over here on the right. We have the coffee bean and then the sugar cube. Awesome. All right, so that's okay. Then we've got the images working and showing on the page, but at the moment they have this white background, which makes them look pretty crappy to be honest. So I'm going to show you a couple of properties now that we can use to change the color and the blend mode of images, which when used together, will get rid of this white background for us. Now, I don't want this to be a big lesson about how blend modes work because there's a ton of different ones which do different things and it's kind of beyond the scope of what this is all about. I want to stay focused. So we're just going to be looking at a single blend mode multiply, which allows us to get rid of this white background. So then the first thing we need to do is apply a color property to the image itself, which is going to be colors.brown. And then in square brackets, we can provide a strength. So I will say 100, right? So this is the same color as the background of this section of the application. And if you have a quick look at this so far, you're going to notice that it's colored the whole image, that brown color. 
So it just blends completely in with the background and we can't see anything. Now, if we use a certain blend mode in combination with this, then we should get the coffee bean image back, but the white background should still be blended into that same background color. So to do this, we can say color blend mode, and then we set that field equal to blend mode dot multiply. And this applies the multiply blend mode then to this image. And if we preview this, we should see the image, but without that white background. Awesome. All right then, so I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing for the second image by copying those two properties and coming down here and after the width, pasting those in, saving it. And now we can see the sugar cube has the same effect. Cool. So my friends, that's pretty much it as far as images go at the moment. So first of all, we create the assets folder and we put our images inside here. The second step was to go to the pub spec file down here, uncomment assets and add the paths to those assets and save the file. The third step was to use this named constructor. So image.asset. So this is still making an image widget right here. It's just another way of creating it. So this right here, this is calling a constructor function, right? To make a text widget. Now image on its own without asset, that would call a constructor function. This isn't the way we do it right here, but it would call a constructor function. Now, the easiest way to create an image widget when we're using a local asset like this is to use a named constructor, which is still just a constructor for the widget, but a different type of constructor. And that constructor, this asset one, expects this as the first argument, which is a path to the image. And then after that, we can have some other named arguments where we can customize how the image looks.